Hello everyone, I'm Karen Margulis. Welcome to my studio. It's Sunday and it's a play day in the studio. So today I want to paint large and I want to share with you in this video my three top tips for painting large pastel paintings. So I'm going to go right to the painting. I'm going to dive in with this painting and as I paint I'm going to share these tips with you so make sure you stick to the video till the end because it'll tend to go through an ugly phase too so I want you to stay to the end to see it come together and make sure you don't miss those tips. So I'm going to get started. I'm working today on a piece of UART full sheet. This is 18 by 24. So that's my tip number one. When you want to paint large I recommend that you buy full sheets of paper or even rolls so I buy UART paper by the roll and cut it to size. I've painted as large as 50 by 60 uh, and a lot of 30 by 40. So this way a full roll allows you to really paint larger. But I get the full sheet so I can cut it down smaller if I want to or if I want to paint larger like this 18 by 24 I can do that. It's more cost effective to paint or to buy by the sheet and not buy a, pa a pad. I'm going to paint some palm trees today and as you can look and see I've already used a pencil and very lightly drawn in the shapes of the uh, and placement of the palm trees. I want this painting to be an impression of a palm of palm trees like I'm laying there looking up at these palm trees on a beautiful uh, day in Florida. I have a reference photo or a couple of them and then I also have a smaller painting. So this is an 18 by 24 painting I did. That's my tip number two. Whenever you want to paint something large, a good thing to do is a smaller study. This way you can work out colors and composition and any kind of problems on smaller scale instead of going to your bigger piece of paper and perhaps making a mistake. So tip number two, do a small study for a larger painting. Now I'm going to block in my big palm tree shapes, actually I'm blocking the entire painting with some hard pastels. I'm using a light touch. I'm, I'm using, these are Charvin water soluble pastels. So I could very easily do a wet underpainting for this, um, but I'm going to do a dry wash for today's uh, video just so that you can see the versatility of doing a dry wash. I'm using super bright colors. Why? Because I want these palm trees to look interesting and exciting. And I know that if I just painted with green, it would be a, just a very green painting and it might not be very interesting. I also want to make sure that the spacing of my trees are unequal and that the size and shape of the palm fronds will be unequal and I'll adjust those as the painting goes on. I'm using these really bright colors because I want some excitement under the green and hopefully a lot of it will show through. I'm adding another bright color. I don't normally work with these bright colors so it's actually really fun and exciting to get super bright. One thing about pastels that um, I love is that, let me move this out of the way, is that they're very versatile so we can do all kinds of different underpaintings but we can always tone them down so I would rather start off bright and intense and funky like this because I know that I'll be able to tone it down when the painting progresses. So I'm doing an underpainting. Let's see what should I put up in the sky. Let's use the paler pink for the sky. And doing an underpainting is tip number three for painting large pastel paintings. Because if I do an underpainting, I am getting a head start on the pastel application, which means I might not have to add quite as much pastel. Because one of the things that happens when we paint large is, let's face it, we use up more pastel. So why not do an underpainting so that you don't have to use as much of your more expensive softer pastels and you can use your less expensive harder pastels for the underpainting. There is also a distant bit of land in this scene, so I'm going to use another pink to paint that line of trees or whatever is in the background. Alright, so what we can do at this stage in the game 
of our underpainting is if we wanted a wet underpainting we could very easily use a brush and water or any kind of liquid but I'm going to use a piece of packing foam. I got this in some, I don't even know what I got it in, but it looks sturdy. I've never used it before, so let's give it a try. I usually use pipe insulation foam, but I'm out of that. It's going to be noisy, so I'm not going to talk. I'm going to just rub it in. Very scratchy. This is working really well. I made those palm tree trunks, I don't know if you noticed, but I made them short, um, thinner than I really wanted them to be because I knew that they would grow as soon as I started adding pastel. And one of the other things that I really love about working larger is that it allows you so much freedom. You can really get into your mark. You know, when you're working small, it's very easy to tighten up, but when you're working large, it's super easy to let your marks just kind of dance all over the page. So there you have a very nice, soft, out-of-focus underpainting. This actually worked really well, so next time you get a package, if you get these little guys in there, good to save those. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with a soft pastel application. I'm using this set of pastels. This is Terry Ludwig Pastels, the floral landscape set that I selected. Oh, I just took one out of there. I'm going to put a, a photo of this set at the end of this video so you can see all the colors and study them if you wish. But I put this set together not only to paint flowers in the landscape, but it's pretty versatile. I recently painted some watermelon and it was perfect for this, for that. Here I'm going to be adjusting some of the shapes of the palm fronds. I'm starting with my darks. When I paint with pastels, I always start by reinforcing the dark values. Let's see, let's go ahead and start adding a darker green. Pulling my mark to help describe the way these palm trees are growing. I'm calling this painting Palm Tree Expression. No, Palm Tree Impression, rather. Uh, it's just an impression of palm trees. Yeah, I think actually either title will work, right? So that's my dark, cool green. Now I'm going to go to the dark, warmer green and layer this on top. I want a variety of greens in these trees. But I'm starting with the darker color first. I can always lighten and make them less intense if I wish. It's harder to get the punch back. So start dark and vibrant and you can always tone it down. I'm going to add, I'm going to go ahead and add some more green, but I have to figure out where's the light coming from. If you know where the light source is, then it's easier to know which is the sunlit side of your trees and where you will have the shadows. So I made a little yellow sun and that reminds me that the sunlight is over on my left. So I can start to lighten some of the palm fronds on the left side of the tree. Just going back over them. They're starting to come to life just a little bit. I'm going to add a more yellowy green. Some of those fronds are kind of hanging down, so that makes it more interesting. And I'm also going to adjust the shape of these trees and palm fronds when I start to paint the sky. And you'll see that in just a second. All right, I'm going to go ahead, I think, and put in this distant bit of land so that I know how far down I'm going to cover or pull down my sky. So let's get a cool, dull green. Go right up to those trunks. Actually, you can cover up the trunks and then we will pull the trunk color on top of them. That'll make it look better. And why not do the water while we're at it? And the water was blue, so I have several 
blue pastels that I can use and to paint the water so that it looks like it's laying down or laying flat I'm using broad horizontal strokes with the side of my pastel. That's a little bit too light. Let's see what else we have in this box. I'm going to put a little green down in there. But I don't want it to look like the grass. So once I put the green down, I'll cover it with some of the blue. Again, I'm covering up the palm tree trunks because I'm going to pull the, the trunk color on top. That way it won't look like I'm painting up to the edge. That makes it a tricky. Add a little bit more blue to the water. I'm going to cover up the green a little bit more. I like it there, but I don't want it to be too obvious. All right, and now let's paint the foreground grasses. I'm going to use the darker green to create some of the shadows on the grass. And then I'm going to use some of the warmer, more yellowy greens, because this is the foreground. So we can use warmer colors in the foreground. I like this. Remember, working dark to light. So dark first, and then gradually get it lighter and brighter. And one thing that I realized is, in my test painting, I used other pastels, not just this set. So there's some brighter greens in there that I don't have in this set. So I'm going to grab them in just a minute when I get there. So we have the background done. Now let's work on the sky. The sky, it was a blue sky, but clouds were starting to form. So what I want to do is establish some yellow green up in the sky just to give some relief to all of the pink. We don't want all that pink to show up. So I'm going to just add some bright yellow green because having the yellow up in the sky is going to help create a visual connection between the colors up in the sky and the colors in the tree and on the ground. Now I'm adding a blue, but this is a duller blue. It's not as bright as the blue that I used in the water because I wanted it to have a little separation. So these are a little bit duller. Ooh, that one almost jumped out of my hand. But you can see that when you're painting large, <clears throat> you don't have to be as precise with your marks. I'm using the side of the pastel for the most part, and it's really allowing me to have fun with my mark making. I don't have to worry about being so precise. It's very liberating. So if you feel like sometimes you just are too tight in your painting and you and it's your goal to loosen up don't be afraid to take out a big piece of paper and paint something large and if you're saying to yourself but i don't what if i mess up and what if it's not good and i wasted this big piece of paper on something that is not really a good painting i'll have two things for you to think about in that regard the first is, if you did the little study, which was one of my tips, then chances are you've already worked out your problem, so your big painting should work. But the other thing is, there is always the ability on a nice sanded paper, and I'm using UART, to scrub out, liquefy, take it out under a hose, but get rid of that painting that is making you unhappy and doing another painting on top. Or cutting it up into smaller pieces and using the painting as underpainting. So never ever be afraid to paint large thinking that, you know, hey, I'm not good enough, I need more experience, or what if I mess up? It's only paper and there's so many ways that you can save a supposedly bad painting. 
All right, so now I've got my sky, my water, my distant land, my foreground land, my trees. We need trunks. So one thing that I remember that I really liked about this particular scene was the tree trunks themselves were pretty colorful and they were light. So I, I want to start with, let's start with a violet. And I really do want to allow a lot of that fun, bright pink to peek through. That was what made it really exciting and interesting to me. But I'm going to start a little bit darker, as always. Start darker, you can always lighten it, tone it down. And I want to make sure my trunks are interesting, that they're not just straight up and down, looking like... Um, balloon sticks or something, balloon strings. So I have a, I want them to be moving in the wind. So there's my dark. Now I'm going to take a yellow ochre and go back over them using the side or the tip of this particular square pastel, the Terry Ludwig pastels in their square shape really allow you to make a lot of interesting marks. All right. Now, where was the sunlight coming from? The sunlight was coming from the left, so let's add a lighter yellow, but only on the left-hand side. So that way we can start to create some form with these tree trunks. So only on the left-hand side. Also, what's happening is the yellow in these tree trunks are starting to visually relate to the yellows that are up in the sky. Okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead and add some brighter greens to my palm trees. And I'm going to ask Michael, my camera person, to go over, and there should be a tray of pastels that's out that has a lot of green in it. And that will have those bright finishing greens that I very rarely use, but every once in a while we need them. Mm, this one. Perfect. Thank you. So we're just adding some light to the palm fronds. And the last thing that I want to do is I want to get some of these, I call these artificial greens. It, what, when you see the mark, they are so bright that if I were to paint these palm trees with only these bright greens, they would look garish. Uh, I like Sometimes you paint and you're like, oh, it looks like a kid did this. It's probably because your colors are too intense and you don't have enough of the dull neutrals. So you got to have the uglies if you want to use these really bright, pretty ones. Because um, the uglies are what does the work. The bright, pretty ones are like the jewelry. I have another bright, pretty one. Look at that one. And we put some up in the sunny side of the trees. Now, you probably noticed on this painting that I haven't painted a lot of individual palm fronds. I'll do a few right now on some of the trees. This is the idea. I want an impression, so I don't need a lot of detail. And I want the viewer to fill in the detail for themselves. And if you suggest some detail in a painting, what will happen is the viewer's eye will fill in the rest. So suggest and let the viewer do the rest. I like to remind myself that I don't have to spell everything out. Let's add one more touch of this really bright yellow green. Like it's getting some nice sunlight on the grass. And one more thing I'm going to take to finish those bright pinks that I used for the underpainting and I'm going to reintroduce them on top. Oh, that's what I call shouting when you press so hard that your pastel stick breaks. But it's really easy to cover up and fix a, a mistake. So I'm reintroducing that hot pink into the painting on top just to kind of pull back some of that bright, fun color that I had in the underpainting. So I'll just make a few marks of that bright pink in the foreground. And this tree looks a little funky. I don't like what's happening to its shape. So I'll just refine that a little bit more. Refine this one a little bit more. And I'm going to call it done. So, just to review, 
If you want to have success with painting large, number one, get full sheets of paper or a roll and cut it, and that way it's more cost effective. Do a small study so that you work out your problems in advance. And finally, do an underpainting of some kind, and that will save wear and tear on your pastels. So there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed this demo. And if you did, give me a like, give me a comment, ask me a question. I'd love to have a conversation with you. And join me on my next video or over on my Patreon page for lots more. And thanks for tuning in.